All right, guys. Okay. Hello. Coach, Dila, do you want to kick it off? Yeah. <clears throat> Dila, what's up, man? Good afternoon, Coach Dave. Um, just uh, uh, analyzing the third down situation, did y'all find a common uh, theme through those that, that you all can try to address? Yeah, first and foremost, I thought, you know, give credit to Dallas. Uh, I thought they did a good job of um, taking away things uh, that we were trying to do. And, you know, they were able to get to the passer on some of those things. And again, I, I think it's one of those where as you go back and you're always evaluating regardless if you did well or you, you didn't do well. Um, if we can put guys in different positions, uh, different route concepts, um, at the end of the day, you know, being able to win versus certain coverages uh, and making sure that we're doing a good enough job as coaches of putting our right players in the right spots for them to be successful. And uh, if Corderell's unable to go, how do you all make up for all the things he's been able to do for, for the offense this year? Yeah, I mean, I won't speak of injury there, d -Lo. I know you know that, but where we're at right now with all our players, I think I've been saying as a broken record, uh, different guys, whoever's in the game, we run so many different personnel groupings um, that a number of our guys have had a chance to go in and participate and, and, and play. And so therefore we'll continue to go down that road uh, of the personnel groupings and, and guys getting the chance if their number is called to make a play. Uh, if not, just be part of what we're trying to do offensively, which is obviously to score points. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Michael. Yeah, Dave, why no do you feel like this offense has been prone to having some games where just nothing has really worked well? Sure. Usually you have the mask on when you ask that question. So now it's way more intimidating without the mask right now. Um, you know, at the end of the day, look, you know, it's not our goal to go out there and not score uh, like we did last week. Um, there's obviously been, at times, uh, we've been able to stay on the field uh, consistently, and then therefore that usually ends up with us scoring points. Uh, when we have uh, issues of not being able to stay on the field, regardless if it's a coach breakdown in terms of the play design or player fundamentals, at the end of the day, you staying on the field increases your chance of scoring. And we've had specifically last week, you know, we had the back-to-back -back three and outs. We start the first two possessions um, in which we're obviously we're moving the ball. And again, you want to continue to give yourself opportunities in the National Football League to stay on the field. And by doing so, you have to convert on third down. Uh, we have to be better there. We know that. Um, and we have to score points. And when we get down in the red area, um, throughout my whole career as a player or coach, the four-point swings in the red area have decided more games than anything else. Um, so when you're down there, you want to get those touchdowns. Kicking field goals um, is better than not scoring at all. But at the end of the day, getting those the four points matters in terms of those swings. Uh, it's momentum. It's confidence. It's everything. Uh, and we were obviously not able to do that. And again, giving credit to what Dallas did defensively. And, and we have to be better offensively. And you just said sometimes it's coach, I guess, you know, issues. Sometimes it's playing issues. On Sunday, what did you feel like it was more of? Was it more coaching or was it more – player execution well, I think when you play a game like that I don't you know there's you always look at yourself first um player or coach uh, I'm speaking for myself specifically as a coach uh obviously there's things that we have to do better uh there's better ways to get our players in better positions to be successful um it goes straight to a pure self-evaluation after something like that um and even after you win uh, there's times where you win a game and it looks really good on paper and then you put the film on and sometimes it's not as good as you think. And sometimes the scoreboard goes the other way, but you actually played pretty well. Um, obviously that was not the case here in Dallas, um, obviously. But again, it's about self-evaluation. It's how, what, what could I have done better to get, to make sure the offense does better? Uh, how could I have helped the staff? How can I have helped the players? So again, I think if you ask any of us here in the organization, they're going to point to themselves first. And the last thing I've got is, when the run game is struggling as it is, and maybe not as deep as I have, you don't know if you're going to have Cordero. How much strain does that put on the passing game when you guys have been having issues you've had running? Yeah, I think for us in general, offensively, philosophically, we're in a position where I've, we want to take advantage of what the defense gives us. Uh, sometimes you'll play an opponent who likes to load the box. It doesn't mean you stay away from the run. There's certain runs that obviously work better than others. There's other times where the box is lighter. 
and you want to pick up the ball um, or you want to run it because the box is lighter. So, again, I think each game is its own individual entity in terms of how you want to attack the defense. Uh, for us in general, ultimately, it's about scoring points. So the best way to do that, we'll try to do that. Um, you want to be, obviously, a certain part of your aspect of the offense wants to be balanced. But the end game is still to score points, however you're able to do it to keep the defense off balance. So whatever that opponent essentially presents us, we have to have the answers for it for the players, and the players have to go out there and execute. Thanks. Tori? Yeah, you were talking about winning versus certain coverages, and I know that was something that Arthur was talking about yesterday. And I was just curious, kind of from a teaching perspective, what are the keys to getting separation against man coverage? Well, I mean, it's a really good question. I think at times it can be schematic. You know, that's why there's there's different ways to motion, stacks, bunches, um, allowing players to get free releases at times. Uh, there's obviously within the fundamentals of a receiver position, uh, how to defeat press for different leverages. Um, and then what routes you give them. Some routes are just better versus man, uh, so specifically uh, the types of man that you might face. And there's other routes that are better versus zone. And we as coaches, myself, pointing at myself first, making sure that we put the players in best position and win versus those coverages and leverages. I guess now looking ahead to to this Thursday, I know Arthur was talking about this being a pretty physical uh, Patriots team, and, and the physicality is sometimes something that can be overlooked with this group. And I was just kind of curious, in what ways do you see that physicality kind of jump off the tape when you look at this defense? Yeah, first and foremost, it goes without saying, they're obviously well coached. Um, they're big. They're thick at the point of attack where they need to be. Uh, they're secondary does a very good job of making you earn it throughout the whole route. Uh, they're very sticky. The linebackers do a really good job of rerouting the certain routes to help their defender behind them or next to them. They have a great understanding of leverage uh, defensively. They know where all their help is at all times. Um, so they're always trying to lead you to their help. Uh, so for us as coaches, we have to understand that. Players have to understand that. Uh, it doesn't deter you from trying to go out there and, and run what you need to run. But at the end of the day, understanding that they play fundamentally sound. So how you beat fundamentally sound is you have to make sure you're fundamentally sound. Um, but it's all over the film. It's been like that for probably two decades uh, since I've been in the NFL. Uh, every time I've got to face them as a player or coach, this defense and this team, um, they don't beat themselves. So you have to go out there and you have to earn it. Thank you. Anthony? Um what are you expecting more from your wide receiving core, of course, with being without Patterson and Ridley, specifically Darby, who had his first catch last game? Now, how excited was Frank? My goodness, I don't think he's taking the smile off his face, which is awesome for him to go out there, have the experience, uh, get his first catch, uh, regardless of the situation it happened in. Uh, again, we, we believe in all those guys, whoever's up, whoever's out there. Um, we're going to go out there with complete and utter confidence. They're going to go out and win. Again, I go back to it's our job as coaches to make sure to put them in the best position possible. It's their job as players to go out and execute it. So, again, whoever those guys line up on game day with, that's why we continue, we, we continue to preach the, the competition within the roster. Um, we believe in whoever that, who made up this roster, who's on this team, and whoever has a chance to go out there, that they're going to provide an opportunity to be successful. Uh, and, again, there's utter and complete confidence these guys can, all guys in the offense, but specifically the receivers can go out and win. You talked about your confidence in the guys, and obviously with adversity injuries, I know it's a part of the game. Well, as a coach, as coaches, what do you tell the receiving core, you know, going into this game, even though they've been sort of in this position before with guys just being out? I don't think anything's changed, uh, regardless of who has been in the lineup and who hasn't. Uh, the message has been uh, consistent. Go out there and do exactly what you're asked to do. Uh, don't try to make a play that's not there. And that goes for all positions, quarterback, O-line, running backs, tight ends. It all happens all together. Uh, you can run a great route. You can be wide open. If a protection breaks down, you never get the ball, and therefore it never shows up on the stat line. 
But there's a lot of things that go with receiver production. Specifically, when I had coached the position for a few years in the NFL, you know, you you grade the position slightly different. There's only one ball. You might have four receivers in the route. The three other guys might have won. The ball might not have gone there. It doesn't mean the group in general is not producing in terms of winning. It's just where the ball ends up. And sometimes, for whatever reason, the ball doesn't go uh, for a productive play. Um, again, confidence in that group. Go out. They they play hard. They play fast. They play physical. It's what we expect from all our groups. And uh, excited to see them Thursday night. Anitra? All good, guys. All right. Anybody else? Diva? Michael? Michael? Yeah, Coach Dave, uh, I, I have a follow-up here. Hey, um, how does Kyle Duggar uh, come off on film? We've been following him since uh, high school in Lenore Ryan, and it looks like sure. he's uh, stepped up his play there uh, in yeah. his second year in the league. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's – He's one of many D led that have stood out in terms of making plays, but being in the right position. That's the one thing that, you know, I'm sure there's been a lot of things said about um, how well they've been coached and how good the defense is. But I'll say this, they're usually in the right spot when they need to be. Um, that's a credit to the player, obviously also credit to the system and he's no different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Going once, going twice. All right. I uh, appreciate it, guys. Thanks, man.